بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم يئس الذين كفروا من دينكم فلا تخشوهم واخشون اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأنت ممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الرسول بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك وإن لم تفعل فما بلغت رسالته والله يعصمك من الناس إن الله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين In the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate Respectable audience, distinguished listeners, honorable viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, God willing, we are going to touch those most important and fundamental doubts that have been raised on the theory of selection. On the theory that Imam or the Caliph of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household has already been chosen before or prior the demise of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household. But prior touching those fundamental doubts in their due responses, let me complete the previous sessions with some complementary points that have remained untouched. You know that in the previous lecture and topic we talked about Imam in the light of the prophetic traditions. And we did talk about those important traditions and narratives that state and reiterate the concept that Imam Ali salam, is the successor to the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household. And he is chosen not only by the Prophet himself, but rather by Almighty Allah. This very verse of the Holy Quran that I have just recited for you, dear listeners, Ya ayyuhal rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik, wa illam taf'al fama ballagta risalata, this verse of the Holy Quran explicitly connotes the concept of Imam. Meaning that Almighty Allah said to the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him and his household in the far will, Pilgrimage. In the pilgrimage, that was the last pilgrimage of our Holy Prophet. Almighty Allah says, O Prophet, O Messenger of Almighty Allah, convey this message of mine to the people. If you do not do so, if you do not take steps forward for conveying this message of mine that I have just revealed to you, 
It is as if you have not done your whole prophetic mission. It is as if you have done nothing of your prophecy or your prophetic, we can say, duty. Then it says, Wallahi asimuka minan nas. Do not fear, do not have any fear of the people, whether they accept or not. Because the fear of our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household was this that if I declare this message, may the people show some harsh reactions. Almighty Allah says, Do not have any fear. Wallahu ya asimuka minan nas. Wallahu la yahdi al qawm al kafirin in Almighty Allah. Do not guide the disbeliever. Yes, of course, those who obdurately take steps against Almighty Allah's will, against Almighty Allah's pleasure, they will not be guided. This is what Almighty Allah says in this verse of the Holy Quran. In the light of the traditions, we touched two important traditions. One of them was Hadith Thaqalain. Our Holy Prophet said that I would remain too precious in priceless things. And on my behalf, you have to grasp these two things firmly. And with firm resolution. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him said that if you grasp these two things fully and firmly, you will not be misguided. For these two precious things are the things that would not let you to be misguided. And they are the Holy Quran and the progeny of our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household. Another important addition that we resorted to, that was the Hadith of Ghadir, the Ghadir tradition. There might be some doubts and discussions about this important tradition. So now we are going to have a very brief look at this tradition. One of those most frequently narrated traditions that one can see in the history of Islam, that is the tradition of Ghadir. He who doubts about the veracity and the accuracy of this tradition, he should doubt about each and everything, about all the concepts that are relevant to Islamic concepts. Why? Because there are very rare cases that has to be frequently transmitted as that of the tradition of Ghadir. Because there are a huge amount of scholars and transmitters of hadith and traditions that have transmitted this tradition. Let me have a very brief look at the statistics that are available in the most valid canonical traditional sources. They are as some 110 companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household in one way or another has reported this tradition. More than 80 people of Tabi'een, the followers of the companions of the Holy Prophet, they have also reported this tradition. Let me highlight the number of people, the number of scholars who have reported this tradition. So there is no doubt or no doubt remains about the chain of the transmitters of this tradition. La
one of them is this, that more than or a hundred, hundred and ten people from the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household quoted this tradition. More than 84 people from the tabi'een, from the followers of the companions, from the second generation of the Muslims, they have also reported this tradition. More than 50 people of the scholars from the second century, more than 80 from the third century, more than 92 people, more than 90 people from the third century scholars, they have also reported these traditions. They have also quoted this tradition. The same is as following. 43 people from the scholars of the fourth century, 24 people from the fifth century, 20 people from the scholars of the sixth century, 20 again from the 7th century, 90 people from the 8th century coming till the 14th century that 90 scholars from the most prominent and well-known scholars of the Muslim world, they have quoted this tradition. Can you find other concepts that have to be having such a rich in content in such a huge amount in quantity that has to report another concept? For sure not. There are very rare cases that has to be compared with this tradition. As I said, he who doubts about the veracity or about the chain of the transmitter of traditions, particularly this tradition, he has to raise doubt about each and everything. So there are very few people who have raised doubts about the chain of the transmitter of these traditions. For this that it is supported by a huge amount of people, scholars and prominent theologians, historians. And they have reported this tradition. There is no room left for the doubts and for a skeptical approach that one has to say that this tradition has not been produced by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household. So these amount of companions, these amount of the followers of the companions, these amount of huge, these amount of scholars from different centuries that they have reported these traditions. What he can do with all these quotations, with all these narrations that has been transmitted by a, a great deal of his scholars. So this is one aspect that can be dealt with in this tradition. I mean the tradition of Ghadir Khum. From another aspect of this tradition can also be dealt with. And that is the content of this tradition. Some might raise doubts about the content. They might say, okay, this tradition has been produced, there is no doubt about. But the content, you Shi'at people claim that this concept of wilaya and the concept of leadership, our Holy Prophet did not mean this. If this doubt is raised, what do you have to say? You know that there are various contexts. There are various con contextual Evidence that prove the theory that has been raised by the Shia theologians. The Shia theologians are of the view that the content of this verse, the content of this tradition, clearly and explicitly denotes Imam Ali salam's imamah and leadership. It does not talk of love and affection only, as that has been given as counter-argument by some of our Sunnite brothers. The Shias are of the view that there are contextual evidence that clearly demonstrate our views, our thought, and that is Imam Ali al-Islam's leadership in Imam. What are those? The first important contextual evidence that can be seen is that prior this phrase, 
that man kuntu mawla fahadha aliyun mawla, our holy prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household, paved the background for this wilaya, for this leadership. I mean the sense of leadership. By saying that, Alastu awla bikum min anfusikum? There is a verse of the Holy Quran, you know that, that an nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. So touching this context, our Holy Prophet say to the audience that Alastu awla bikum min anfusikum? Am I not prior to you than yourself? Am I not to be preferred to you than yourselves? For sure the audience, the faithful people unanimously say it for sure. And that is what Almighty Allah through his revelation has said. That an-nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is more well-wisher to, to Muslims to faithful people than themselves. How well we shall we are to ourselves? Think. But the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him is more well wisher to us than ourselves. So this is the context that our Holy Prophet said that Alas to awla bikum in anfusikum. If it was only the matter of love and affection, if it was only the matter that you have to like the people of my progeny or my family members, then there was not any need that our Holy Prophet should have this, we can say, confirmation from the people. Why our Holy Prophet should stress, why our Holy Prophet should insist and emphasize that am I not more will wisher to you than yourselves, there was not need. So Almighty, our Holy Prophet could have said that, you, okay, you have to like, you have to be kind enough towards my family members. Even being kind enough is not something that should be exclusively to our Holy Prophet family members. No, every Muslim should be kind towards another one. So it was not the matter in the issue that our Holy Prophet should stop all the pilgrims for the sake of proclaiming the likeness and love and affection of his family members. The task was more important, more significant than love and affection only. So this background that our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household paved and prepared for his speech, it shows that our Holy Prophet meant Imam Ali al-Islam's leadership, his religious authority, being that he, is a, he has to be deemed as religious authority after my demise. This is what makes sense. Otherwise, it would be something nonsense that all the people should be stopped for the sake of only proclaiming that you have to love and be kind towards my family members. <laughs> So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, another important contextual evidence that is the prediction our Holy Prophet makes. And that is that he gives the news of his demise. Then he says, Then, Man kuntu mawla fahadha aliyun mawla. For whosoever I am mawla, I am master. So after me, after my demise, Ali is his master. 
Ali is his leader. Ali is the one whom all the people should follow. Another important and significant contextual evidence that is that after this proclamation or after this declaration, all the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him and his household clustered around our Holy Prophet and Imam Ali salam, congratulating, sending them their best wish and sending them their congratulations. Bakhin, bakhin. So this word gives us this sense that there should be something new. There should be something that our Holy Prophet should have announced a new post in a new socio-political position for Imam Ali salam. Otherwise, there was no need of sending congratulations for Imam Ali salam. Even the second caliph was one of those who have congratulated Imam Ali salam for being selected as Muslim leader. So this is another important evidence that clearly and explicitly connotes Imam Ali salam's socio-political position. I mean Imama. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, coming to the most fundamental doubts that have been raised on the theory of selection. Firstly, let me say that we mean from the theory of selection, the theory of nasp, and from the theory of election, we mean the theory of intikhab. We call that some people should choose their leader. From the Shi'at perspective, we are of the view that in respect with Imam Ali salam and the rest of the Imams, we can only justify their Imamah through the theory of selection. There is no room left for the people that they have to choose their Imam after the demise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household. As they did not play any tiny role in selecting their prophets. Why? Because we did say that the Imam of the Muslims has to meet certain characteristics. In one of those indispensable and uncompromising conditions that we have put for Imam, that was infallibility. And this infallibility is something that cannot be recognized and that cannot be discerned by the people. It has to be discerned by Almighty Allah. It is something that Almighty Allah can have a say in respect to one's infallibility or his fallibility. So due to this, we believe that the theory of selection, I mean nasp, is more justifiable and is more logical and rational than this, that the people should come together and in a democratic process they have to choose their leader. At least in respect with the first infallible imam, we believe that the theory of selection is totally untrue. So now let me touch those fundamental doubts that have been raised by our Sunnite brothers. Why they do not accept the theory of selection, the theory that the Shi'ats favor most. One of the doubts that they have raised is this, that they believe if we accept the theory of selection, if we believe that the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him has already chosen Imam Ali as his leader, as his successor, as the Muslim community leader, it would entail some false implications or it would entail some dangerous and detrimental implications that we cannot abide by or we cannot follow then. What are those implications that they think they are extremely dangerous or detrimental? One of them is that if 
the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him exactly selected Ali salam as leader, as Muslim community's leader, it would say or it would entail, it would imply that the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him have been derailed. Or the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him became defiant towards our Holy Prophet's order. Why? We cannot say that the companions of the Holy Prophet were defiant towards the Prophet's order and commandments. It is their argument. They say we cannot accept the theory of selection. Some of them dare say that the Holy Prophet did not choose Ali as the Muslim people leader. But some of them say they, he has chosen because of all these evidence. But he did not mean sociopolitical position. Rather, it was only a matter of love and affection. That you have to love and have, be kind towards my family members. But some of them say, if we believe that our Holy Prophet has chosen Imam Ali as Caliph, then there would be some false implications, or we would be imprisoned by some false, by some dangerous and detrimental implications. So one of them was this that I have said, if exactly the Prophet has chosen Imam Ali, so why, the question comes, why the companions did not follow our Holy Prophet's commandments? Why the companions ignored or overlooked the very event and incident of Ghadir Khum? Why they did not care about our Holy Prophet's commandment? This is the question they have to answer. They said, due to these questions that would remain unanswered, we say that even our Holy Prophet did not choose Imam Ali as leader. So the judgment or the assessment is with you, dear listeners. Everyone with unbiased, with unprejudiced conscience has to deal with all these issues, with all these theological, we can say, corals. We ourselves have to wait all these evidence that we have access to. The Shias are of the view that all these evidence show that Imam Ali Salam had to be the leader. But they say due to these false or dangerous implications, we cannot say that the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him did some unjust actions. So due to this, they say, we cannot accept this theory. Moreover, they say that if we accept the theory of selection, it would entail the hypocritic nature of some of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It would entail that they, that some of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household were hypocrite. Not all, but some of them. But it is hard enough for our Sunnah brothers to accept that some of the companions of the Holy Prophet did commit mistakes did commit blunders, or some of them were indeed hypocrites. Since they have this preconcept that all the companions were just, since they believe in advance that they were all just, they were all correct, they had all good and noble behaviors, so it seems hard for them to believe that in some cases they had derailed from the right path or they have deviated. It seems hard for them to believe. But we will come inshallah and we will talk logically and historically that there were some cases that can never ever be overlooked, can never ever be negated or denied that some of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him did some mistakes. We should not insist that all of them were completely just and none of them committed any slight mistake.
for sure. If we had this preconcept, if we have this prejudice position, then we will be ready to justify each and everything, each and every hadith or each and every ayah. So respectable audience, let's have a very short look. Let's have a very short glimpse on the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, deeds and words. Can this theory, I mean the justice of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, wholeheartedly accept it or not? Can we say that all, all of them were just? Can we say that none of them committed any mistake? Or there are explicit verses of the Holy Quran. There is a very independent chapter that talks about the hypocrisy of some of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household. What can be said about their character, about their behavior? So respectable audience, since this is a very critical issue and we should not follow our preconcepts, our prejudices, our sectarian inclinations. So it suits better that we have to delay this important topic for the next session. God willing, in the next session, we will be talking about the theory of the justice of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Meaning that some of our Sunnah brothers are of the view that all the companions of the Holy Prophet are just. They should never ever be criticized. None of their words or behaviors should be put into question. All of them were good. All of them were kind. All of them were true. We will have a critical appraisal of this approach in the next session. So respectable audience, may God bless us all. A happy life in this world in a happier life in the next. God bless you. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma anfa'na bil'ilm wa zayyinna bil'hilm wa jammilna bil'afiyah wa karimna bil'taqwa إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين